This morning, uh, we're starting a new series called Take Care of Yourself. As a follower of Jesus, we understand that there's many verses about putting others first. Uh, Do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of others more highly than yourself, right? And of course, all those verses are very good, and they're very true, and there's nothing against them. That is exactly what we should do. Put others first. The first shall be last. The last shall be first is another example of that. But guess what? If you are not taking care of yourself, you won't be able to take care of others. Every time you get on an airplane, the flight attendant gives the safety instructions. And one of those instructions is the following line. You may remember it. Should the cabin lose pressure, oxygen masks will drop from the overhead area. Please place the mask over your own mouth and nose before assisting others. There's also uh, some announcements that'll say, um, help yourself before you help your kids. And that seems crazy because you shouldn't be doing something for yourself before helping your kids, right? Well, guess what? If you're passed out on the floor of the plane without your oxygen mask on, you're of absolutely no help to your child. And then they may not be able to figure out how to put it on either. So that's why they say, take care of yourself first. Put on that oxygen mask so that you can help out the other people around you. And that's one of the main things about this series that we're going to focus on is that you need to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. Take care of yourself from a spiritual perspective so that you can be an effective witness for Jesus Christ. That's one of the main portions of this. Uh, For instance, you cannot drive a car on an empty tank. Actually, scratch that. You kind of can. You can. You kind of can do that. Um, in uh, we borrowed my our in-laws Prius to go up to Canton this weekend because guess what? It gets almost 50 miles to the gallon. And uh, he always told me if it gets to zero, you can go another 40 miles. I said, okay, no problem. So I told Hannah, I said, hey, we've got 10 miles to empty. And she's like, what? Are you kidding me? We're like to 18 miles away. From-. I said, but don't worry, we got about 50 miles to go. <laughs> And uh, I tell you what, we did. And we made it to the gas station with a, just a few miles to empty, and we filled that thing up with three and a half gallons. And I'm telling you, we were then, a distance to empty was then 188 miles to empty with just three and a half gallons of gas. That was just amazing. But I think this if you are driving a car on an empty tank and it actually does stop, okay, someone's got to be pushing your car from behind in order for you to move. Someone else has to take on that burden of picking up the car's slack and use all of their strength to even get the car to move an inch while you sit there in the driver's seat and just wait for the car to get moving so that you can steer it around. You see where I'm going with this. You must put gas in your car in order for it to work properly, and in the same way, you must take spiritual um, care of yourself. Otherwise, there will be other people who have to come alongside of you and pick up your slack because you haven't been spending time with God because you haven't been prioritizing your relationship with Jesus. And my encouragement to you today is to get alone with God. Spend time with God on a daily basis through Bible reading and prayer and grow in your relationship with God. Today we're going to talk about the life of Jesus Christ himself and see how he took care of himself on a personal level. Even the Savior of the world needed to implement portions of self-care into his life so that he could do what God called him to do. So we're going to open our Bibles to Luke chapter 4, verses 40 and 41. Luke chapter 4, verses 40 and 41. I'll be reading out of the English Standard Version. You can use the Bibles and the seat backs in front of you as well. If you're new to our church, I want to let you know that we don't expect you to be a Bible scholar. Um, so everybody said, thank God, right? We expect you simply to have a willingness to know more about God's word. That's all we're saying. We're saying, be open to what the word of God says. Simply say, all right, I'm going to try and learn more about this and just really see what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do. So for our new folks as well, I want to let you know that we have some readings Uh, that are available to you. Uh, We call them devotionals. They're things you can read throughout the week that get you to read the Bible and then have some thoughts behind it. Uh, In our discipleship hour, we have uh, a set of devotionals for throughout the week that we can give you if you don't currently have a devotional of any kind. So see me after the service if you decide you need that and we can get that to you. Uh, These are definitely a good encouragement. 
Um, additionally, you can follow, yeah, look at that, the YouVersion Bible Notes app. You can scan that QR code or just go in the app and, and find it by clicking more and events and then our church's name, and you'll be able to follow along with these notes today. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus had begun his earthly ministry. He had just cast out a demon from a demon-possessed man, and he had healed Simon's mother-in-law of a sickness. That brings us to Luke chapter 4, verse 40, where we will pick it up now. Now, when the sun was setting... All those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. All right, so here's Jesus doing many healings, and the Bible says that anyone who was sick was brought to Jesus, and he laid hands on every one of them. Did you get this? That also every person that was brought to Jesus was healed. Every person that was brought to Jesus was healed. He lays hands on them, or he would just pray, or he would just heal them. So many miracles happening in this place as Jesus began his ministry, and he had poured out his heart to so many people through teaching, through so many different things that happened. That brings us to verse 42. Luke chapter 4, verse 42, it says this, And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. When day came, he departed. He went into a desolate place. No one else was around. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had expended all of his earthly energy into his ministry and the next morning, he takes time to spend with God, his heavenly Father. What an example for us. You know, Jesus was fully God and fully man when he came to this earth. And surely, he could have just said, hey God, I'm tired, would you just... But he goes alone and spends time with God to be filled with energy, the Spirit of God to be filled with whatever the next day was going to bring. Jesus took care of himself, right? He, there's other options he could have taken. You know, he could have said, no, you know what? I got, I'm the son of God. I got this thing. We're good. I'll just, ah, I'm a little tired, but I'll just go into my next day and I'll figure it out and whatever. But he didn't. He took time to stop. Maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe you need to stop and be silent before the king. And be refreshed in his presence. See, too many of us are trying to tell God that we're too busy doing his work. That we can't spend time with him. And most of the time we're just wearing ourselves thin. And instead of thriving in our relationship with God, some of us might raise our hand. Don't raise your hand. But some of us might raise our hand in our minds figuratively and say that, yeah, we are actually just surviving rather than thriving. And we're sputtering this car along on empty, not sure if we're going to even make it and sometimes expecting God to bless it anyway that's difficult when all along I believe that God is saying hey come come my child Sp just spend time in my presence just get get refreshed daily before me this is not a condemnation thing that God's trying to throw on his people he's not saying you must do this or else and this is you're bad if you're not He's just saying, hey, look, sometimes we get distracted. You ever been there? Sometimes we get distracted with the earthly things that in life, and sometimes it's even good things. Sometimes we get distracted with spiritual things, serving, doing things for other people, expending ourselves. And, and a lot of times, this happens to people who are just servants of God that are really trying to do whatever they can to serve with faithfulness and love and then all of a sudden they just get to their wits end and they are just so tired they can't spend any more energy doing whatever it is. Jesus says to come before God and to spend time in his presence. In fact, Jesus spent time with God so often that in Luke 11, after Jesus had been praying for a little while, the disciples finally said to Jesus, hey man, and yes, this is my paraphrase. He did, they did not actually say, hey man, okay. The basic synopsis is this. The, the, the disciples went to Jesus and they said, hey, you've been praying so often, Jesus. This is not in scripture. This is not the next verse, okay? You've been praying so often, Jesus, and we're just wondering, what are we supposed to say when we pray? Because listen, you've been there like an hour and 
we've been here two minutes and we just, we're not really sure what to say. So could you just give us some guidance on how to pray like you? Because we're really needing that help. And Luke chapter 11, verses two and four says, and he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation. And of course, this is the English Standard Version of the Lord's Prayer. And you might recognize this uh, from maybe in your past. You, you know that for, there's, there's some denominations that focus on this and actually uh, say this more often than we do. Um, that's not because we don't think it's a good prayer. Obviously, we do. It's the Word of God. Uh, we think this is great. And of course, this is the Lord's Prayer. It was said to the disciples in a moment where they were wondering how to pray. But there's a portion of this that I find very important, and it can be interpreted two ways. Give us each day our daily bread. Give us each day our daily bread. And I want to take a look at this because I think this is really important. Some people interpret this as God giving them food from day to day. Okay, God will supply our every need. He's faithful to do that. I believe that. But I would go so far as to say that the daily bread that Jesus is requesting is the daily bread of God's word, the Bible. Maybe the daily bread of an extra dose of strength for the day. God, give us our daily bread, our daily spiritual sustenance, so that we can take on whatever it is that we need to take on today. The daily bread of the daily strengthening that God provides for us. The daily bread of God's spirit that he imparts into us. That daily bread that Jesus is asking for is asking God to supply all of our needs on a given day. Which leads me to discussing this important topic in this entire series that will really be hitting hard. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. We could go many different directions with this. You need to take care of yourself spiritually. We need to take care of ourselves physically. If we're letting our body get to a place that we know is unhealthy, we need to change that so that we can be physically healthy so that we can take care of other people as well. We could go, you know, another uh, version of that in, in the Bible says um, uh, the, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And so as we look at that, okay, if the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, I need to be taking care of this temple that God has given me. So there's spiritually, there's physically, there's emotionally. How are you doing with the given circumstances that are around you? Are you taking care of yourself? We must take care of yourself and we must ask God for that daily bread because we must be partaking in God's word and in prayer to God in order to be filled and empowered for a given day. We can't expect that we've got this all figured out. We can't expect that we've got it figured out. Jesus took the time to do this. He's the son of God. He's the Messiah. You're not. <laughs> so let the pressure come off. You don't need to handle it. Let God do it. Fill yourself up with God's presence. It's important also to seek the baptism in the Holy Spirit in your prayer time as well. We see the truth out of this, out of Acts 1.8, when Jesus says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be empowered to witness. Acts 2.4 shows that when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in other tongues. See, as you seek Jesus in your prayer time, ask God to fill you with his Spirit and be baptized in the Holy Spirit so you can be empowered to witness. Just a few weeks ago, we had our Pentecost service here at church, and uh, we had many people baptized in the Holy Spirit during that evening. It was a beautiful evening. It was a beautiful night of God's Spirit being, being immersed into people. It was awesome. God's filling people with His Spirit even to today. It's not just an Acts chapter 2 verse scenario. This is happening even until today, just a few weeks ago, and even up until now. God is still moving, and you know what? It's up to us to get alone before God, ask God to fill us so that we can go out and do his work and have strength just to be who God has called us to be. Amen. In Luke 5, Jesus healed a man who was diseased with leprosy. The man walked away cleansed. And we find in Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, it says this, but now even more, the report about him went abroad and the crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities, of their diseases, everything. But he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. Again, in Luke chapter 5, right? Jesus had expended himself in ministry yet again, and he went to a desolate place to pray. 
a desolate place to pray. He spent time with God. He got refreshed for more ministry coming up. He took care of himself so that he could take care of other people. He took care of himself so that he could continue on in God's calling that God had for his life. And the question is, are you spending time with God in prayer and in Bible reading? Just to answer the question to yourself. And I know that schedules get busy, but how can you adjust your day in order to get in the prayer and Bible reading that is so important for us. And listen, I'm not talking about just praying at dinner time, breakfast, or lunch, which if you're not doing that, I encourage you to do that because that's a really great time. In fact, in our evening um, before dinner, we, we often take that opportunity not just to pray that God would bless our food, especially if you're eating something like chocolate cake. God bless this, turn it to broccoli on the way down in Jesus' name because I don't want to gain any weight, but this is really good. Right. But we also take some time, we pray for missionaries every night before bed, by, or before dinner, by name, uh, and just different missionaries. We support different missionaries we know and everything because uh, we, we just feel that's a really good time to do that to make sure we're consistently doing that. So you know, take it or leave it, do whatever you want to do with that, but if you're struggling with, man, I just I need to spend more time in prayer, I need to spend time praying for this and, and for that, and you're just so overwhelmed, take it piece by piece. Take it piece by piece because this whole relationship with Jesus, you're not going to have down pat in one day. Because guess what? I'm a work in progress, and I will be until the day I go into heaven. We're all a work in progress. We, we are all a work in progress. Um, my brother-in-law, Seth, came to visit last week. Some of you may have, have uh, gotten to meet him. And uh, after church uh, in the afternoon, we went out, and we, we ran at the trail. And um, it, it was at the Guernsey, uh, Great Guernsey Trail. If you've not been on that, it's awesome. Good, good place to be. The flattest part of Guernsey County, thank God. It's a seven-mile stretch of flat. That's exactly what I was looking for. Uh, when we moved from flat Wisconsin. Uh, so we go on this off, and well, well, Hannah's brother Seth and I were on that trail, and, and, and we were running, and you know, I was just, we were doing eight miles, which is a lot, and, and it, it felt like a lot, it seems like a lot, it is a lot. And we were trying to train for some races coming up and everything, and at about mile three, I told him, I said, ah, man, I'm really tired. I just don't really, I, I, I don't know about this. About mile four, four and a half comes by, and I said, you know what, I think I'm just gonna go to mile six. I, I, I don't think I want to do eight miles. I said, I'm, I'm just at four miles. I've got to do that all over again, you know, to get to eight. And I was so tired. And what I had to remember and to remind myself in the midst of running is that I just got to take it a step at a time, just a step at a time. Fuel up. You know, we got food. Hannah's dad met us halfway through the run. And we got bananas. We got water. We were fueling up, making sure we had the energy so that we had what we needed in order to do what we were doing at that day. Uh, but if, if you look at it, you know, from the beginning and say, I've just got to get to mile eight, got to get to mile eight, got to get to mile eight, you're just going to be so overwhelmed. So many people are focused on way down here that it, back here, we've got to work on this. We've got to work on this. Oh man, I want to start reading the Bible. Well, you know, let's just take it a day at a time. Maybe decide you're going to read once this week. Some people might say, oh, once just this week. Are you kidding me? I just uh, try once this week and just see what God shows you. See what God tells you and, and grow upon that. In your prayer time, you know, take it a day and, and then grow upon that. Because, say, for running, if you're just focusing on the end game, it's going to be a long process to get to that end goal if you're always just focused on way out here when you're not focused on what's right ahead of you. And, and so taking it at a slower pace, I think, is really important as we look at our relationship with God. There's so many people that are guilt-stricken because they're not at some place that they see somebody else. And so... Relax. It's okay. Self-care in today's day and age is a big issue. And uh, unfortunately, men in households want to act like the tough guy and handle anything that comes their way and push themselves way too far, while women have busy schedules and feel like they're burning the candle at both ends of the stick and they just can't function correctly and properly. And There's many different reasons why we don't take care of ourselves. And one of those reasons is because many people think that they just are not important enough. You know, there's some people that say, you know, I don't want to take care of myself. There's other people to take care of. And if I take care of myself and I'm not focusing on them, and so I need to take care of them because I'm not as important as them. And, but if, as you do that, you're neglecting yourself. And if you neglect yourself, you're going to go down a road that you don't want to go down. And so some people think, no, I can't take all this time because that's selfish and I'm not important enough and I don't want to do this. And this is one of the many reasons why many people deal with mental health issues and they stay locked and trapped in their depression, anxiety, psychotic disorder, whatever it is. They feel like their problem isn't big enough of a deal 
and that they are not important enough to get the help that they desperately need. And I'm telling you that if you're dealing with any sort of issue like this, seek help. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There's many counseling centers in this area. Seek help, most of which have at least one Christian counselor. That can help you if you request that. Get the help you need because you are important enough. If you feel like you're dealing with some sort of issue, get the help that you need. Take care of yourself because guess what? If Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the Son of God who was sent from God himself, needed to take care of himself, then surely you do as well. Surely you do as well. You've got to take care of yourself. You've got to take care of yourself. And I believe it starts with spiritually. We need to spiritually take care of ourselves. Uh, Kendra, if you'd come forward to the piano. I believe that there's many people in this place today that would say, you know what? I've not been taking care of myself. Man, I've just not been doing what I need to do in my life. And I know that. And I've been thinking about it. And I've been struggling with it. And there's some weeks that'll come when I'll start to take care of myself. And I'll slack off. And it's just this back and forth. And some of you just need prayer today to get a refreshing from God so that you can go into today, the rest of today. Don't start tomorrow. Start today. Tomorrow never comes. Don't start tomorrow. I remember when I decided I was going to lose weight uh, and I was going to start this health process, and I, my health journey, and I connected with my health coaches, told them everything, and, and Hannah says, all right, now go throw all your ice cream away. And listen, when she says that kind of stuff, she's not kidding, okay? She's serious. And I said, ah, you're funny. I don't start until another week because I had to wait until, you know, all the stuff came in the mail to begin the process and everything. She said, no, no, you're starting now. Oh, I've got to be kidding me. So I go over, to the, go over to the freezer and hope that there's one in the way bottom under the veggies, you know, that is hiding so that I can grab it later. No, we went through that entire freezer and guess what? We took out every single carton of ice cream that we had just gotten full cartons of ice cream and we threw them in the garbage we took video of it and sent it to my health coaches and um, I don't think they could believe that that happened well it wasn't my choice uh, <laughs> it wasn't my choice <laughs> talk to Hannah about that one but we need to start today start today I haven't had a bite of ice cream in a year and a half I'm not saying that it's bad thing. You can have ice cream if you want. Do what you want to do. I just know what ice cream does to me. You know what different situations do to you. You know what's going to set you off. You know what's going to say, if I have a bite of ice cream, I might want to just have the whole entire container. I know that about myself. That's a, that's a setback for me. So I know I cannot go back to that or else I'm going to do that thing. You all, we all have different things that we need to work on, different things that we need to stay away from, different things that we need to initiate today so that we don't Go back to the life that we once lived. Some of us need to initiate a relationship with God today for the first time that we maybe have never started. Or maybe it's a, a time for you that you know that you haven't been on the right track. You may have accepted Christ a while back, but you just kind of went away from it and you know that today is the day that we need to make some things right. And so what I'd like to do is ask our deacons to come forward as we close in prayer. And they're going to be available to pray today with you and we're going to take some time for worship. We're going to take some time for a few moments of prayer. And I just want you to seriously take this time and consider, how, how can I take care of myself? And if you don't know how to do it, um, ask God. Come forward for prayer today. Again, deacons, deacons and spouses, if you want to come forward today, we're going to begin this time of prayer. It's time that you stand up and take care of yourself. No more trying to be everything to everybody and be the one that holds it together. You can't do it on your own. You're not going to be able to do it. You can't. We need other people in life. And more importantly, we need the strength that comes from God alone. I believe this is a word for somebody in here today. You are released from the burden of having it all together. You are released from the burden of having it all together in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for each and every person that's walked into this church today. God, there's so many needs that are being lifted up to you in this moment. So many needs that are being lifted up to you. So many people saying, God, I haven't been taking care of myself. God, I have been so burdened. I've been so... The list goes on. And God, your invitation says, come. Come, child. I'll give you rest. Come, I'll give you rest. God, thank you so much for that. 
God, I pray that we as the church will not see this church as just a building, but we will see the church as the people. We are the church, and we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would send us out by the power of your Holy Spirit today into the world around us. God, help us to be witnesses for you. Help us to be obedient when you say to speak to somebody. Help us to take leaps of faith as we walk throughout our journey of life. God, use us to be disciple makers in the world around us. Help us not to be a church that just meets on Sunday, but help us to be a church that goes out into the world and makes disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, into the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, use us today. We accept that empowerment from the Spirit, and we say yes. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this week. We'll see you all Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. for our discipleship hour. Have a great Sunday.